As a manager, you're tasked to solve said problems with the resources provided to you. You're not there to organize a complaint fest. The team from a leader wants consistency. They want to know that once it starts, it's not going away. A lot of leaders have the tendency to go, oh, let me get this technology and this technology and this one and this one and this one and this one, when the management system actually does a lot of those items. Hey, everybody, it's Therese, Kelly, and Stephen from Agency Performance Partners, and we are joining you to talk about our August items. It is about basically exploring insurance manager job description. Ooh, um, I like that description. So we know how one. one. <laughs> job descriptions. Job descriptions are so, so important in an agency because we want to make sure everybody is aligned so they understand what they are doing, what their role is in the agency. And so it's very clear when we do reviews with them, we can review the topics and the items that they should be doing in the agency. So, Stephen, what is the role of an insurance manager? Oh, I think that's a hot debate because do we just want the title so we feel like we have some more things and some more money? Mm. Are we just the aged one that still is on the team so we become the manager by default? Or are we trained and skilled in the role? So I think that when it comes to the role of an insurance manager or a manager at an agency, we really have to look at what is the need of the agency? What power do they have? And what is the outcome we're looking for with the position? Mm. And I think that that's where the job description really comes in is what should they be responsible for daily, weekly, monthly? And what is the limit of their authority? Because are they a senior account manager that now is overseeing the team because somebody else doesn't want to do it? So they're a manager, but they can't discipline, hold accountable, or train anybody? Or is their role really to look at the numbers, have some say, come up with game plans or figure out where the team is struggling and help them along? So lots of different options or opportunities there. But I think that that's what we really need to define before we just start throwing around the word manager. Well, once you throw it out, you can't give it back either, right? So it's a, it's a tough one to, to <laughs> reel back in. It's a tough one to wrinkle back in. <laughs> I do think, you know, when you're looking to see, do you have someone? So like, let's just walk through the titles, right? Someone could be a senior account manager and handle more complicated scenarios. Someone could be a team lead that is more like, hey, I'm beta testing things and keeping an eye on everybody, but I don't really have a ton of authority. I'm just sort of a point person. Maybe if somebody's out, I step in and help. And then there is like manager, director, you can get into even crazier titles. But I think it's important to identify where they're, what happens and, and starts and stops. So you're looking at qualifications for a manager. I know people talk about education. I think that you have to have been in insurance for a minimum of six years. Okay. So in six years, you've seen some things, right? <laughs> you've been there. You have to be intelligent enough to solve people's problems and answer questions. And sometimes that just doesn't happen without some experience, right? Now, so is that a requirement? Probably not, but you need to kind of identify that they have to have some tenure. And everybody's teams are different. So I interviewed what would be a manager at an agency last week. And, you know, the reality is she's going to have to come in and deal with some very difficult personality types. <laughs> If this person is coming from outside, coming in, you have to look at your current team and say, hey, can they organize this? And by the way, if the manager is right, are you willing to let go of some of these difficult personalities? Because otherwise you're setting your manager up for failure. There is no magic fairy wand that exists out there to fix fix attitudes, right? So I think that they have to be, they have to look at numbers. They can't operate emotionally. The last thing that you want to do when an insurance manager, get what, what I call a union rep, which is like, Basically, the union rep comes and says, all right, team, what's all of your problems? And then takes them to ownership and says, these are all the team's problems. Well, as a manager, you're tasked to solve said problems with the resources provided to you. You're not there to organize a complaint fest. And I think part of it, too, is like some agencies, the leadership or the management team wants to be everybody's friend. Like nobody wants to be the bad guy. Right. So sometimes bringing somebody in like the opposite of what kind of what Kelly was saying is sometimes you bring somebody in with the expectation of they're going to be the heavy. They're going to have to set the world. They're going to be the one that's going in, not knowing that they're going to be the loved one because somebody needs to have some regulation or some activities to get things done at an agency as well. 
I hate it when, you know, I was at an agency where it was brought up that you can't be friends with your staff. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we do this and we do that and we go out and do this. And I'm like, you can't have that kind of relationship with your staff. And they just didn't understand that. And I believe that it's it's a lot because if you're friends with your staff, you like let them get away with more things than you would if you are a manager of your staff. So you have to be careful of that fine line of where to draw it and say, okay, I can be friendly with the staff, but I don't have to be friends with the staff because you start to show, you know, partiality and you start to let friends get away with things that they wouldn't normally get away with if you were really, truly managing them. Yeah. And and I think we got in this conversation recently with another agency. You can be friendly, you know, but... The reality is if you're going out drinking wine and complaining about everybody, that's not a good look. You have to really have some clear boundaries on things for both parties, both being the leader and the team member, I think, in particular. I think to be a leader, you got to have a good communication and you have to definitely just sort of identify like your role. Your role is not to, and this is another common thing we see with the wrong managers. They come in and they do the work, right? Like, oh, let me take that off your plate. You're overwhelmed. Let me do that for you. Well, that's also replicating bad behaviors of everyone's so overwhelmed. Well, you're the manager. It's your job to figure out why, you know, by looking at the book of business. Is it adequate? Do people have seasonality? Is there anything in there that we need to adjust? Are people just taking too much time doing some things? So I think that, you know, having a backbone, being able to communicate, being fair, being firm, but and I like the word fair and firm, right? So it's not just one. And also identifying that you're you are there to tell people when they're giving you excuses. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Stephen, I mean, you did this, uh, you know, as a chief operating officer. Like, what is like the responsibilities? I was the coup. Sure. I was the, the coup. coup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the COO. You were. Uh, I think it's. I think it's really like it. It took a mind shift for me because I had always ran a smaller team or always been heavily involved in the service and sales as well as managing a team. So when I was at a smaller agency, it was like my job was to make sure numbers were being met. Was anybody struggling with a difficult client that I would take it over? And it was kind of more like, here, let me be the next level and just make sure everything's getting done. At a larger agency, it really became refining the skills of each person on the team and clarifying the expectation. Sure. It was daily monitoring, weekly reporting, monthly one-on-ones really trying to develop the team and make sure that they were upholding the values of the agency or when there was problems with the alignment, really working with them to try to make them successful. Mm. Like getting out of my own head, getting over my own bias and saying, you know what, everybody gets a fair chance. Let's see what steps we need to take to get you there. So I think a lot of it is mentoring. It's regular check-ins. It's a lot of consistency. It can't be this This month, we're going to do this. Next month is that. The month after, let's think about this. The team from a leader wants consistency. They want to know that once it starts, it's not going away. Mm -hmm. Or if it fails miserably, we admit it. And we just say, hey, guys, I'm going to take this one. This was my bad. Here's what we're going to do instead. But we also have to give it a chance to work or not work. Yeah. I also think like a big part of like the day to day is like saying good morning to everybody. I know that sounds strange, but it's kind of a big scenario. And if you're remote, you kind of got to do it a little bit more even or just checking in. I think you have to look at the numbers all the time because the numbers are going to tell you what's going on. I think you have to keep continuously evaluate your team. Like what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? How can we bring resources for the weaknesses? Otherwise, you know, it's just going to kind of get sat sat there and that's not going to work. 100% either. (laughs) Enough in the front lines to still know the processes are working or where the processes are struggling. Yeah. And identifying like potential solutions to problems, but communicating and getting people to kind of lock into what they need to focus on for sure. As a leader, what I love the mindset of let me teach you how to get to my level so that I can get to the next level as well. Right. We can't be afraid of that cross training either. No, I agree with that. Therese, how does this role evolve, right? Over time, like there's technology, there's all sorts of stuff, right? So how how can managers stay up to date? Well, you have to be open to change. You have to be open to new technology. That's a very big one because a lot of seasoned staff, they're like, oh, this is the way we do it. 
and and they don't evolve. And you have to, to be a manager, you have to evolve with technology. You have to evolve with the systems that your agency decides to use. Hopefully you have a, a role in choosing that technology, but even if you don't, you still have to embrace it and you have to use it and you have to be able to use it enough so you can train your staff on it as well. So you don't want to manage people and just tell them what to do. You want to know how to do it and show them how to do it and lead them in doing it. If you don't know how to use it, but you're telling people to use it, that doesn't make much sense at all. You want to be up to date on the technologies. It's amazing the things that technology can do for you. I mean, you can use automation. You can use templates with emails. There's so many software tools that we can use, a lot of them in our management systems that we already use. So we need to make sure we're up to date on those. Be on the lookout for newsletters from the company that your management system is from to see if there's betas or there's new stuff that comes out that you could test that will actually improve your system that you could bring to your team and say, hey, our management system came out with this new tool. Let's test it. Let's add it to our systems. Let's use it. Because a lot of leaders have the tendency to go, oh, let me get this technology and this technology and this one and this one and this one and this one. When the management system actually does a lot of those items and you can do it all in your management system. So first, look at your management system internally to see what things you can use in your management system to improve that role and improve your staff's experience with the management system. And then from there, then you can look out and look for other technologies that will successfully help your role as a manager and your staff's role as the insurance agents. I think definitely. And also getting people to embrace the technology is part of the manager's role. So Mm -hmm. I think we always talk about, is it, is it a recommendation or is it a requirement? (laughs) You know, when we talk to managers, right? A lot of times we will talk about our time management program and our efficiency. And we'll talk about, Hey, and I know Steve and I have had this experience. What, you know, we're going to get rid of people's notepads. And they're like, what are you going to tell them? Am I going to tell them? Like, nobody wants to handle it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, sometimes you just got to come out and say it and say, we got to try it. We're not doing this any longer. You're all saying you're so overwhelmed. Well, you don't need a notepad in insurance. Right. True. It's a fact. So, you know, when you're looking at this, Stephen, what kind of advice maybe would you give for somebody that has a role that you had, you know, managing what, 25 people, give or take, couple locations? What would you say to them? I think that you really need to look at what is your skill set and where do you struggle and then find other people on the team to help complement with some of that. Mm-hmm. Like I was great at great ideas or big things and coming up with what needed to happen, but the implementation didn't always necessarily work well. Mm -hmm. So I found a couple other people on the team that were great with that and could step in and be like, hey, guys, what do you think about this? Where where are the problems going to be? What is the team going to take or leave from this? And we would try to play it out ahead of time. I also loved having like beta testers on the team where I could get a couple of people to try something for a couple of weeks in a new way or a new technology before we rolled it out to the whole team so we could find some of the problems. But what it was also doing is helping to create that next level of leaders. So they were learning skills that were part of their day-to-day job. It helped them with their time and their confidence, but it also helped me make sure that we were going to be exceptional in rolling it out for the team or there'd be less failure points. There was already a couple of people doing it that could say, it's not as bad as you think, guys. And I think on smaller teams, it's literally just looking at what is the skill set, what do we need, and making sure that people understand that you're not there just to make their lives miserable. Because I think sometimes you, like, as a leader, all of their problems, we're like, gonna take away all managing fairies. <laughs> but that sometimes we have to get over the hump or the challenge and still be positive about it. We can't go complain to the team when things aren't going well or there's a larger challenge. Yeah. Like sometimes we have to keep that to ourselves and just put a smile on and be positive with the team. Just put a smile on your face. Just put a smile on. Just put the smile on. You know, just to conclude here for everybody, I think that the, you know, the biggest opportunities that we have are if you're a manager and your job is to execute the agency's vision, you may feel differently. You may think it's impossible. I know as a manager, I felt that way sometimes like, how am I going to get this done? But if you start having that self-doubt, look at it like a challenge. Like, well, they believe I can get it done. Otherwise, that's why they're giving it to me. So what am I missing? What do I need to do differently? How can I go evoke the team? And a lot of times I think what happens is you get self-doubt because 
maybe the team's not bought into you as a leader. This is something new where you've been so used to like, just like the helicopter mom, right? Or what is it? The lawnmower mom? Like we just clear out team problems, which is part of your job, but it's not your job to take the work off the team. Every so often you can dive in because whatever it, you're short staffed or there's something going on, that's fine. But the same people are coming to you all the time to take work off, then there's a bigger problem. Correct. And what we find so often is like there's the OG team in insurance, right? 15 plus years. They're very good at their job, but they're not always as efficient. The green beans, that's what I call the young team that mm-hmm. have come in that we need so desperately. They're very efficient, but don't pick up the phone and then causes other problems. They don't always have that same like m- emotional intelligence connecting with people. And so you really need to kind of think about as a manager, your job is to address both and get them both to be the best that they can be. So absolutely, if your agency is struggling with being efficient and thinking like, man, I'm a manager, I hear how busy everybody is all the time. They want to keep hiring people. That's what my team says. We need to hire more. We need to hire more. <laughs> I'd say you should contact us because our agency efficiency program proves, and, and I'll say this, and people can disagree and push back, but many agencies that come to our doorstep are actually overstaffed. And they don't believe it. And by the way, there are some that are understaffed. But I've had many, many conversations when I ask, okay, how much is your revenue? How many employees? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like I had one this morning with somebody. And I was like, you're very overstaffed. He's like, oh, I know. But everybody still can't get work done. And I was like, and that's why we're on this call. He goes, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Something is missing. And I can't quite figure it out. <laughs> so you know, sometimes having a third party outside coming in can really help a manager to understand like, you know, I like to say, obviously, we worked with Steven's agency when he was a manager. Sometimes it's just then the manager can just keep the train on the tracks, right? Like, right. sometimes things are so far off track that you need to kind of come in and fix it. And then the right person can just keep going down that hike. And I don't know what it is. But when we say it, people listen different. <laughs> They're a little bit more like, oh, the cool aunt or uncle came in and said it. (laughs) It must be true. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. Well, check out our agency efficiency program. It's amazing. Also, if you like the podcast, please like it. We're happy to talk about anything that you guys want. Send us some information or send us a little note and we're happy to cover any topics. Also, to find us on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or I should say X. I still can't get the X. (laughs) It feels like a dirty movie. Yeah. Like find us on X. Like, oh, who's scandal? <laughs> you know, or just come to our website. But we are happy to help you guys. But if you're a manager in this role thinking, man, I am not really sure I'm going to get this done. It might be worth a phone call. So, Teresa or Steven, anything else to add? You can do it. You can do it. Put your get her back. done. You can do it. Put your back and do it. All right, everybody. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day. And we'll see you in the next podcast. Miss America Wave.